Hello friends, this is Kik and in today's episode, you can expect Elon Musk who proudly announced that the acceleration of the 3-ton Cybertruck to 100 km h will take less than 3 seconds. The ballistic parachute system that saves Eve Tolls in the event of engine failures. Daihatsu has shown an electric car transformer with a body suitable for 3D printing. Samsung, which will release a smartphone with an onboard neural network. NASA, which unexpectedly for everyone, launches a space Netflix without a subscription fee. And a private Chinese company that has conducted successful tests of a reusable rocket. All this and much more right now. Let's go. There are 30 days left until the start of the production of the series version of the Cybertruck. At the event time to this, Tesla is expected to finally publish the official specifications and prices of the electric pickup. Meanwhile, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has shared some details about production indicators. For example, the billionaire said that the Cybertruck will weigh about 3.1 tons and some versions will weigh 2.7 tons. Tesla is aiming for an acceleration time from 0 to 100 km h of less than 3 seconds. Tesla plans to produce 200,000 electric pickups per year. According to Musk, production turned out to be much more complicated than the original project. The latest estimate is almost double the company's October forecast, according to which it plans to produce more than 125,000 Cybertrucks annually at the pilot production stage. This is not the first time Musk has spoken about the difficulty of producing the Cybertruck. After publishing Tesla's October earnings and loss report for the third quarter, he said they dug their own grave with the Cybertruck. Musk explained that producing the electric pickup requires a staggering amount of work because it is something radically new and there is nothing to copy. Musk also mentioned the presence of a beast mode for this car without going into too much detail. He also explained that the Cybertruck will be built using bulletproof steel panels and buyers will be able to purchase an additional option for armored glass for the windows. The CEO confirmed that official details will be announced at an event for the delivery of the first series cars to customers on November 30. Deliveries of the pickup will begin after two years of delays due to various problems, including changes in its design. What do you think? Will Musk be able to accept accelerate the Cybertruck to 100 in just 3 seconds? Or is this another marketing move of his? Waiting for your comments. In the meantime, EV toll manufacturers have long discussed the possibility of using ballistic parachutes as a last resort safety measure in the event of a crash. However, the question of the practicality of such an approach at low altitudes, especially below 100 meters, has arisen. AeroHT, a subsidiary of Xpeng, published a video of a safety system with multiple parachutes, which was tested on a prototype of the manned multicopter X2 at an altitude of just 50 meters above the ground. The parachutes begin to catch air just 1.5 seconds after exiting the front part of the aircraft, fully deploy in approximately the same time, hold the X2, preventing it from flipping, and slow the descent speed to 5.2 ms before landing. In the video published by AeroHT, the moment of strong swinging when the rotor returns the nose of the aircraft to a horizontal position as well as the Evtol streaking the ground is cut out. The company claims that the aircraft was not damaged. Most likely passengers would survive the crash, but it would definitely be traumatic. The landing speed is equivalent to jumping from a height of 1.4 meters without any visible cushioning that would soften the load on the spine. Let's move on. Daihatsu has shown an electric car transformer. The conceptual model Daihatsu Mido MO is made in the body of a K car with a modular design. The owner can print on a 3D printer and replace not only interior details but also body elements. Company representatives showed what it looks like. According to the car manufacturer, the concept of the car of the future is that it changes along with the owner, and at each stage of a person's life, it offers the different functions they need. For these purposes, the electric car is equipped with replaceable body parts and interior, as well as the ability to configure the platform for single or family use. In addition to convenience, the new philosophy is aimed at ecology and allows changing the car less frequently. For example, when a person has a family, they will not need to buy a bigger car. It will be enough to rebuild the Mi Mo body from a pickup into a minivan. The car is currently presented only as a concept at the Japan Mobility Show 2023. The release date of the serial version and the price of the novelty have not yet been announced. And here, the South Korean manufacturer Bokyong has introduced the compact electric bicycle Pop Cycle, one of its features being a folding design that allows changing its dimensions depending on a person's height. Thus, it is suitable for both children and adults. The complex rear frame with bolted attachment is equipped with a lever, which allows the front part of the frame to move back and bring the 16-inch wheels closer together. The handlebars fold to the side and the pedals transform conveniently. The bicycle itself weighs 16 kilos. The Pop Cycle's electric drive consists of a 350W 
W rear hub motor and a 15 ah battery using Samsung's 21700 cells. Its speed reaches up to 25 kmh and the range is about 80 km. The bicycle will be supplied with a color display and a remote control on the handlebars and it includes a 7-speed transmission. An additional 10A battery can also be installed increasing the range. The cost of the pop cycle starts at 1396 USD. Shipments will begin in early 2024. In the Chinese segment of the internet, an intriguing video appeared, published by the owner of a Xiaomi 14 Pro. The author of the video used the smartphone's display as a hammer to prove its resistance to mechanical impacts. According to the video footage, he succeeded. To confirm the authenticity of the video, the blogger occasionally slowed it down, showing the moment the display hit the nail. The smartphone received a protective glass from Xiaomi named Dragon Crystal Glass. According to the company, it is stronger than Apple's ceramic shield. As a result of the experiment, the device's screen remained functional and did not even get Scratched. However, this can be partly explained by the fact that the video's author placed a finger on the back panel opposite the point where the nail was struck. This helped to avoid excessive force on the glass panel that could cause it to break. Samsung has announced that it is working on creating a smartphone endowed with the capabilities of generative AI at the device level. The new product will join the Galaxy family and will be presented next year. According to Samsung representatives, artificial intelligence will offer gadget owners a completely new user experience. The technology being discussed will allow the device to work with AI scenarios even without an internet connection. Generative AI, similar to ChatGPT, will be able to provide access to various services using simple commands. It is also mentioned that Samsung is specifically working on its own version of generative artificial intelligence. There is a possibility that the new capabilities will be equipped out of the box with the upcoming Galaxy S24 flagships as well as the new folding smartphone of the Galaxy Z series. The company has not yet disclosed details about the work of its proprietary AI. Well, since we're on the topic of smartphones, NASA has introduced Spot the Station, an app for smartphones that helps Earthlings identify the location of the International Space Station. The service shows on two-dimensional and three-dimensional maps where the ISS is currently located. The app also advises where and when the station will be best visible from the ground. You can set up notifications to know about the station's approach and look up in time. A special feature of the app is the AR mode, in which users are visually shown where the ISS is flying over. Spot the Station also collects all ISS-related news from NASA. Spot the station can be downloaded from the App Store and Google Play. And more about NASA. They have announced the launch of their own streaming service called NASA Plus. Agency representatives have named the premiere date, as well as described what exactly it will broadcast and how it differs from most mainstream counterparts. The target audience for the service includes dreamers, pioneers, the new generation, and simply people who want to know more about space. According to NASA's Associate Administrator for Communications at Headquarters, Mark Etkind, enhancing the agency's digital presence will help to tell more people about how NASA explores the unknown in the air and space and implements everything new for the benefit of humanity. The launch of NASA Plus is scheduled for November 8th. By this date, the agency promises to release apps for Android, iOS, Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, as well as launch a web version of the service on its official website. Google, part of Alphabet, is set to dive into the depths of the Pacific Ocean and connect eight remote countries to the digital world using underwater cables. This is a joint venture between the USA and Australia. Soon, Pacific islands such as Micronesia, Kiribati, the Marshall Islands, Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, Timor-Leste, Tuvalu and Vanuatu will gain access to high-speed internet. The Australian and US governments are investing 50 million and 15 million respectively into this ambitious project. Google's mission to provide global connectivity is intended to change the digital landscape beneath the waves of the Pacific Ocean, increase cybersecurity resilience, and connect these countries to the world. And what would Kik be without Space News? iSpace, a company based in Beijing, has made progress in the development of reusable launch vehicles. They have conducted successful tests of their Hyperbola 2 rocket. The first stage reached a height of 178 meters, then demonstrated a controlled descent and landing with an accuracy of 1.7 meters. Hyperbola 2 is a two-stage rocket powered by methane and liquid oxygen. Its total length is 28 meters with a payload capacity of 1.9 tons. Earlier this year, the company stated that it was abandoning its plans to create Hyperbola 2 and immediately immediately moving on to the development of the larger and more powerful Hyperbola 3 which is 69 meters long. The most powerful model in the Hyperbola 3 family, consisting of three connected modules, has a similar configuration to Falcon Heavy from the American company SpaceX. Hyperbola 3B consists of a central core and two side boosters, and is capable of delivering 8.5 tons of payload to low Earth orbit with the ability for multiple reuses. That's all for today, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to not miss a fresh portion of handpicked news. Goodbye!